Hello and welcome to Hi everyone. EFAP Super Chat Catch Up for episode six two six five. Uh, it's the one where we talked about the year. We're gonna check out some messages you guys sent to us. If that's alright. Well that's uh, alright with me. I'm I'm okay. Hope I'm it's alright with the audience. Um I mean there's no reason not to just get started. And the first one says Taylor Swift is greater than any Disney Star Wars or MCU. Taylor Swift. Like in terms of like reach or popularity or maybe they just mean quality. or in talent. It could be right because uh, I don't know I anything guess, about. I guess it's a little bit difficult to compare when it's like we're talking about music versus filmmaking. <laughs> like as uh, in terms of directly comparing their quality, is a Taylor Swift single better than Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania? Ah, uh, I guess in the broadest sense possible, probably, yeah. Like, if without getting in, in terms of just the general, hmm, is it, be, is it nicer to listen to that song than it is to sit through two hours of Ant Man? Well, probably. Talk about Godzilla Minus One. We did. Oh, we did. We did. Really I hope cool you enjoyed movie. our discussion. Mm. It was, it's my favorite movie of 2023. It is one of my favorite movies of 2023. Mm -hmm. Same. There were some real bangers in 2023. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. I had a dream where EFAP banned Fringy for peeing and booping himself without cleaning up afterwards. He just wallows in his filth. Any truth to this? Oh my goodness, Fringy well, would never do that. He would never here. wallow in his filth. No. <laughs> well, why would I would no? I don't even see why someone would do that in terms of why would the inconvenience, the inconvenience of just getting up and going to the toilet for five minutes outstrip. The inconvenience of poop just constantly meeting your nostrils well, and piss. Just well, maybe you're asking gold. He he goes to, to the toilet. I know, I was just being a little. You were yeah. just being a little hyperbolic. Being, there, a little, being, being a little bit cheeky. Being a little cheeky. cheeks. Mm. Yee fab. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Also, watch Paranoia Agent. It's really good. Also play Neo Replicant. Also get Destiny on again. I feel like that's worth five dollars. Lol. You gotta get him yeah. on to have a debate about Interstellar. Ooh, that would I'd be, be fun. That. We gotta do Oppenheimer as well. <laughs> that never happened. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I, got... I don't know about that one as much because I imagine that it might start to delve into the whole historical accuracy as a conversation, which um is far from what my interest in that film is. As a film, um, no, I don't know what gave that was... impression. Considering his criticisms, he talks strictly about pacing and character. Yeah. Oh well, in that case, I I just get the impression because Interstellar is obviously purely you know fiction, but Oppenheimer, it it just seems like it's something that can end up happening when you talk about like biopics. Oh, so now it's fiction it to, to navigate via love. I see. Also, um, I bad. would. If Destiny wanted to have a stream Should or conversation where we talked about like historical accuracy in works of fiction uh, or in movies and stuff, I think that would be pretty interesting. Oh, I, 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 again, I'd just be more interested because Oppenheimer is really it's one of the best movies of last year. Yeah, and I think uh, so. To think so negatively on it, hmm. Uh, hey, Massives. Mola, please get Rags and Fringy to read the next couple Super Chats. No reason why, I just like hearing them talk. Thanks, and play Little Nightmares. Hi, Rags. Hello! I can do yeah, that. Give a, yeah, will, give them a paste down there. I will you post them. You guys can take turns Rags if you want. want. I'm posting them as they are, so I can't help you if you don't understand them. All right. No, oh, this uh, is one of them here. That's the next one, yep. Okay. Uh, love me some Pat. Welcome, fellow long man. I'll be at Patrician TV. Yes, he was very welcome. Uh, uh, he is, is long, yeah. When he first came on, his second appearance was a bit more memorable, I uh, guess, in terms of <laughs> events, because that was the uh, the famous, probably going to be voted one of the best memes of uh, this year at EFAP. That's, uh, that was a good one, yeah. That was a good one. Um, I guess, uh, Rags, if you want to read out this one. All right. Recast Lord of the Rings, a serious recast, a wacky recast, and a cringe recast. Serious, like Patrick Stewart as Gandalf, wacky like Arnie as Gandalf, and cringe recast like George Clooney as Gandalf. Hmm. Um, First off, I don't agree well, I mean, with the I... premise that George Clooney as Gandalf would be cringe. Um, and also, no way that we're doing an ex exhaustive one for all three of these categories. 
No, we can we can do a few though. Like if we had to do, do like, let's start sure, with Frodo, but... right? We do, we could do five characters for the three categories. Yeah, that I'm sounds okay fair. That. So let's start off with our protagonist, Frodo Baggins, okay. uh, played by Elijah Wood in our universe. The so serious what would recast. Be... Okay, serious recast. Hmm. Sean asked, no, um, let's see. Uh... Ooh, is, would that be allowed? Uh, but no, let's see. Who would, who would be a serious good recasting of Frodo Baggins? Would Timothy Chalamet match? Ooh, maybe. Uh, that might yeah, not be I bad. Think that, I, think that's, uh, I think that could work. Yeah, I think that would work. All right. Uh, now we got so Wacky, we... isn't it? Oh, Danny DeVito. The... Oh, Danny DeVito. Yeah. yeah Danny, Danny DeVito, DeVito is our yes. wacky recast. Him as Frodo would be amazing. I want to see him grimacing in pain and falling over all the time. Um... Fringe recast, uh, Jared Leto. <laughs> oh, that would be cringe. Uh, that would cringe, be cringe recast. You uh, could put that for any of the characters. You could. Yeah, I was the thinking thing. the exact I was going to say, thing. like, Jared Leto Jared and Gandalf. Leto could you Gandalf? fucking imagine? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there, there was some ultra cringe potential in that. So who else could be a really cringe casting for uh Frodo? Uh, Frodo. Hmm. Cringe casting for Frodo. Uh Pedro Pascal. What, just because you, <laughs> you, you don't get see it for a lot of stuff, it's it would make totally, no sense at all. Totally. <laughs> you just can't see it. That's because like if oh, they said, also... you know, he's he's a really good talent, he could probably pull out, you'd just be like, yeah, okay, but like what the hell? Cringe cast for um, him, but they they don't do any of the force perspective. He's just a normal yeah. sized person, but everyone yeah, just yeah, plays yeah, it yeah, like he's a hobbit. <laughs> yeah, and funny. maybe we have him. We have him specifically overacting, like he has to overact, uh, overact, but he's normal sized and he's Frodo. Yeah, right. Let's do Gandalf. Uh, well, All right. Patrick Stewart. I mean, Patrick Stewart. I would agree with that as a serious uh, choice. I would agree um, as well. I almost want to find a different one because that was that, their suggestion. Well, I mean, you know. Anthony also, I don't Hopkins. know if he's a good enough choice these days. Um, he might, he's a bit old now. Oh, I all think, right. Well, oh, okay, right. If we were taking that, what about uh, Anthony Charles Hopkins? Dance? What about Charles Dance? Yeah, Charles Dance. So is I a would, cast for considering what you both just said, I would more than likely go Anthony Hopkins, Gandalf, and then Charles Dance, Saruman. Um, I'm I'm happy to fill those slots with those choices. My, yeah. I think my concern with Anthony Hopkins is I don't know how, how physically capable is he to do a lot of the Gandalf stuff. That's true. Because uh, uh, it's funny how I Charles said Dance is Patrick actually Stewart is old. pretty good shape for his age. But of course, so, old is not the problem. It's the activeness of them. And I think Patrick well, yeah. Stewart is, you know, you can tell from his latest stuff, it's like he is getting on. Yeah. Anthony Hopkins' well, here, me... acting is totally fine, but his physicality is probably not. Mm. Well, I think Anthony Hopkins would make an amazing Bilbo. That could work, yeah. I mean, I, I, I am. In fact, I would, I would agree with that fully. I would happily move him over to Bilbo. That would be, uh, would be cool. So that means so... we need to do wacky Gandalf. Wacky Gandalf. Um... Wacky Gandalf. Um. Bilbo. <laughs> <laughs> hey Frodo, you find that right? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I've been researching for 27 years. That's uh, what it's going to be. Is it's going to be? I know the backstory. About, uh, every piece of jewelry this side of the about, Andalus, uh, Frodo. I'm just going to say, for wacky, I'm probably just going to think comedian. What about like uh, Steve Martin? See, that's like wholesome wacky. Uh, Bill Burr is more is edgy wacky. wacky Bill Burr is wacky wacky. Yeah, I like the idea of Bill Burr as uh, Gandalf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now we need cringe Gandalf. <laughs> Uh, Jared Leto. We, we can't do Jared, Jared Leto, Leto for every one of them. <laughs> well, no, but we didn't do Jared Leto for, uh, who did we do for cringe for, uh, Frodo Jared again? Leto Denver cringe Pascal. would be like Legolas. He'd be the cringe Legolas. Uh, well, we said he applies to basically every character. You could, you could yeah, totally so see Jared him. Jared Leto is not allowed for cringe utterly, actors. Mm -hmm. So he's utterly exempt then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Gandalf cringe casting. Hmm. Um... 
Gandalf cringe casting. I think about who them. played Reva. No, that's too. You gotta. It's gotta be within the realm of possibility. I think. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because like a Jared Leto, cast? I could totally see them actually doing. <laughs> and it would be such a fucking mistake. We'd all be like, why the hell did you cast him as Gandalf? It's like, it, it, and you could see him in interviews being like, I feel like I could pull it off, yeah. Yeah, because people loved him in, um, you know. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah. uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of older actors that like pop up in things and people are like, ugh. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about too, and I, I'm really struggling. No, honestly. maybe the cringe comes from them being uh, like super over cast and things. Um, oh, this, hmm, cringe, yeah, this is actually a tough one, cringe casting Gandalf. Especially when Jared Leto is not on the, you yeah, know. Yeah, when he's I, not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if anyone's made a list of cringe actors. <laughs> <laughs> Top 50 most uncon... Oh my god, The Rock is Gandalf. Oh, that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, so I bad. like that answer. That a, yeah, yeah. Could, or like, he like you refuses know. to fall down the bridge at Casa Doom because he's like, no, nah, Gandalf wouldn't lose like that. I'm the star. Or that they'd put I the, can't be gone for half the movie. Him killing the Balrog has to happen like immediately after. He can't let anyone yeah. believe that he's defeated or anything. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, I think yeah. we found our Gandalf. There we go. Our cringe Gandalf. <laughs> okay. So uh, we'll okay, do three so more Aragorn? characters. Yeah, we'll do Aragorn. Okay. So Aragorn. Uh, serious recast. Well, a Chris serious Hemsworth. Re I was about to say Chris Hemsworth. I oh really? Were you? That. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I was. Uh, yeah. I think I mean, a he serious could do recast it. I think so. Yeah. The man's got some uh, chops. He does. And he uh, fits the bill for the rugged, handsome uh, hero warrior man. So. Yeah, he, he's in. And Aragorn isn't that expressive in his role. Um, he's got a few moments, but he's mostly fairly stoic and reserved. reserved. So yeah. I think Chris uh, pulls that off particularly well. Even the, ooh, maybe we should save it then. Maybe we should save Chris Hemsworth for a role where it is a bit more. I don't know. He'd make a good Aragorn. There's a part oh, of me that uh, wants to that knows his incredible range with like com, uh, you know comedic timing and stuff, but he would make such a good Aragorn. Yeah, let's keep him as Aragorn. Let's keep Chris Hemsworth as Aragorn. Yeah. Um, that's our serious recasting, and now we have our wacky recasting as unless, Aragorn. Unless Molly, you had a different idea in mind. Or no, no, I was happy with that. You, um, um, okay, so a we'll wacky recast. Uh, um, hmm. Mm. Can be a tough one. Um, what about Hayden Christensen? <laughs> yes, that'd be that wacky. would be <laughs> that'd be wacky. Or maybe we should save him for our uh, Boromir. Hayden Christensen is Boromir. <laughs> Good. Yeah, a bit on the young side, but not bad. Not bad. Um. I mean, oh wait, how, how old, old is Hayden Christensen, Christensen right now? Oh, I guess he is. I, oh yeah, I guess I'm losing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're thinking of him. <laughs> yeah, twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah, he's forty two. That's why I was thinking about him as a as a. Yeah, that would be good. Oh, well, actually, I. I guess thinking about the dynamic between Boromir and Faramir, it's hard to think of Hayden Christensen as the older elderly brother. You know. Um, I don't know, as long as you put him up against somebody who is younger. Yeah. Yeah, fair, fair. We're gonna do fringe for Aragorn? We haven't done, we mm. haven't picked, uh, we haven't made a choice yet, have we, for, uh, for Wacky? We didn't do Wacky, we gotta do Wacky Aragorn, right? I thought we just but it was that Hayden Christensen. That we're talking about, also, we were discussing whether or not he'd be born, yeah? Well, you started to random. Yeah, you Bormier was discussing tangent. that. Yeah, that one. Okay, was all right. Okay, if we want to settle on him for Aragorn, yeah. Uh, yeah, he could be right. our wacky casting. That'd be fun. Though okay, I do cream. think, I mean, not to do the. Oh, dude, what if we fucking had like Aragorn and Boromir were um, Hayden Christensen and Ewan and, McGregor? Um, Ewan McGregor. <laughs> yeah. 
That's I that's got to be the wacky casting <laughs> to see those two side by side in that role. Yeah. Oh, that would be too good to pass up. And then cringe. Uh, so I'm 50-50 on this, and I think it's just meta stuff, because he would do a really good job, probably. But, like, imagine it was announced, like, Chris Pratt is Aragorn, who'd be like, ugh. <laughs> that's a, that's yeah, an element that's of cringe part cringe. Pratt. That's part cringe, <laughs> part serious. Because you would you'd probably nail it, uh, but... You'd probably yeah. do a good job, yeah. And everybody would just say, oh, again, Chris yeah. Pratt again. He, he squeezes into the cringe spot, yeah, because he's a bit over, yeah. But he would also be, but and he's he also, be, like, he half be, cringe, he half good. He would at least yeah. be fine. He would at least be Oh, yeah, be absolutely. Character. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. I just thought of something for um for Gandalf. Harrison Ford would probably make a an interesting Gandalf. I don't think yeah, I don't think that's impossible or anything. It could work. Cuz he can if he can channel his inner like Indiana Jones cheekiness, I think that there really could be he could be a good uh, Gandalf. But carrying on, carrying on. Uh well, do we want to do Barmer then? Um, you know, Domino Gleason would probably make a really good Gandalf too. Mm. I'm trying to think of which. All right, we who's should... next? Um, yeah, let's think about who next. Um, what um, what films are you thinking of, Rags, when you cite Domino Gleason? I don't know. It's just, uh, probably a. Uh, like a combination of a, a weird combination of In Bruges and Harry Potter. Oh, uh, you mean Brendan Gleeson? <laughs> Brendan, oh, oh, Brendan Gleeson. I'm sorry. I had a feeling because Double's way too young to do <laughs> Gandalf. Yeah, my my probably Brendan Gleeson. Yeah, he could be a fun Gandalf as well. Um, maybe instead of doing just two more, we could just throw out a few randoms. If there's any on your head for yeah. any of the three yeah, categories so. for any characters. Uh, okay, so, um, hmm. So, uh, I was thinking oh, yeah, wacky well... golem casting, uh, Terry Crews. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Crews would be an amazing, instead of a tiny little white creature, he's a yeah. big black creature. <laughs> it would be so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, uh, um, who, okay. Here, let it me ask be, you this. It would be a really cringe Galadriel, other than, you know, uh, uh, Galadriel. Miley Cyrus. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Because if they, because you could imagine oh, they Aquafina. get her for like. Well, so the reason why I feel like Miley Cyrus could actually happen is because they're just like she's breaking into acting more and more, and that she's a big name, and you know, she she vaguely could possibly look kind of like Galadriel, but then the the fact that she's Miley Cyrus, she's like, what the fuck? Like, why why would you ever do that? And they're just like, that's a good idea, right? Mm. Marketing. You know what? I... What role would you put James Corden in? Oh, That's, got a, that's uh, the cringe category for sure. Elrond. Elrond. Make him Elrond. Oh my fucking god. Can you imagine horrible. James Corden as Elrond? <laughs> <laughs> I can't, it makes me laugh. <laughs> oh, just imagining him at the Council of Elrond. Oh my god. Um, let me see. What other. Okay, where, where would you put. J oh, Jason Momoa would have to be Gimli, right? <laughs> I mean, that could probably be good. I honestly think it would, it would work, right? Funny. If you can make yeah. uh, John Rice Davies, if you can make him work. Then Jason Momoa would be like, he's already kind of got a somewhat dwarfish look with the facial hair and the long the hair. I think he'd fit. Like, you know, being a very tall, muscular man. Well, yeah, because a dwarf is basically like a tall, muscular man just like squashed down a little bit. So, yeah, I suppose know. so. Yeah. If you look at, you know, the people who played the dwarves in The Hobbit, you know, that's uh, a lot yeah. of them were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's true. And plus, I think that you could you could make him look dwarfy. You can actually commit to the dwarf look, which they only did for like half of the dwarves in the Hobbit. But um, cringe Arwen oh, well, casting Megan Fox. Yeah, that would be yeah. ultra cringe. Yeah, the first time they get to Rivendell, she's on a motorcycle just wiping it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm um, trying to think of who is. We, we've not been thinking about serious. <laughs> oh, you know while. what? What about, I bet. Uh, 
Oh, well, yep. here, I think a serious recast of Elrond might be Robert Downey Jr. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Maybe. Not impossible. Now my, let's see, um, this is actually really interesting to think about the potentials and possibilities, because I want to have someone who is dis is different, but can give the same vibe. Yeah. Um, because I think like like I think that Robert Downey Jr. could give the Hugo Weaving vibe while still being distinctly different. Um, same thing with like Jason Momoa and Gimli, you know, and John Ritz. So. But like we would need good pairs for. Yeah, like Mary and Pippin would have to be a good pair, you know, that are kind of similar, but they have to be, you know, good enough at acting to to have their different personalities show through. I um, I would say that we have provided many answers to this I question. I think so, yeah. Now we're getting now I'm and now I'm starting to get too invested in the in the and the um in the, in uh, the, the potentials here, yeah. And All the thing right. is, I it would it would also probably be interesting to have. What if we took some of the actors from the original because now it's twenty years later, and then recast them as like literally different roles because we're starting to get to the point where, you know, Viggo Mortensen's an old guy now. Um, you like know, Sean Theoden. Bean's an old guy now. Yeah, like yeah, like yeah, like Aragorn or Ar Viggo could make a great Theoden, and probably so could Sean Bean. So having them. In different roles would be interesting. It'd be trippy on the mind, too, with how familiar we are with the movies. Yeah. Hi, Rags, Moller, and Fringy. Hello. My first live EFAB after spending the last two and a half years catching up on past ones from the beginning. Thank you for everything. Oh. oh well, I'm thank glad you for being here. What an adventure you went on there. Yeah, and with every day that passes, we make it even longer. This never mm -hmm. stops. Big old. The fun journey. never ends. Uh, hey Massives, it's been a great year for me and a great year for EFAP. It's been almost three years, in brackets, uh, EFAP135, since I became a toxic broodling. Thanks for all the informative and entertaining discussions, debates, and fun streams. Also, play Little Nightmares and High Rags. I still have oh, more hello. characters. Portal 2 is great, right? Okay, bye. Portal 2 is great. And, uh, Portal 2 is excellent. Thank you, yeah. For, uh, the God, I love message. the writing in Portal 2. It's so funny. It's very snappy, very entertaining. God damn, Wheatley. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to you wonderful fuckers, I bought a copy of PS2 Return of the King to play again. Thanks for the new Lord of the Rings and all your coverage and uh, reason to read The Silmarillion for the first time in 15 years. Yeah, I mean, uh, wow. glad you enjoyed the, the Lord of the Rings coverage, which um, got fucked over, but re-released, uh, certainly by the time you hear this, in the form of three individual EFAP movies that I'm sure will hopefully now survive the ravages of YouTube, at least. Truly the return of a king. Yes. I want to know your opinions on Rebel Moon. The movie confuses me. The ending I actually wanted the battleship to bomb the village because what the fuck was a few warriors going to do against a flipping spaceship? Well, we'll find you know, that's out. a really good we'll question. In Rebel Moon Part 2, The yeah. Scar Giver. I'm, the... I'm sure that... I'm cool. sure that Zack Snyder is going to work really hard to explain to us why the battleship doesn't just annihilate everyone from orbit. You got that, like, you know, what's coming next time, and that, that big fight's going to happen. It's going to be so good and make so much sense. I can't wait. Uh, and we'll get the extended version, and I just think, I think Zack Snyder will be solidified in everyone's minds as one of the greatest living directors of all time. Easily. And maybe everyone will be encouraged to go watch Army of the Dead after that. That's right. Especially considering we did, the same universe. Yeah. Uh, Mola, can you guys please cover Shad's video on AI? I'm curious about your thoughts on AI art after seeing your video on modern art. Hey, we did an AI... Well, uh, we did a whole yeah, episode yeah, on yeah, it, so uh, yeah, that should... Uh, Look at all these in the Rebel Moon idea. one. It's like, you guys just getting your wishes. Look at that. Crazy. We are wish granters. That's what we are. We give the people exactly what they want, what they need. Hi, Rags, Sweet, and hi, content. Patrick. Hello. You would say hi as well. Hey there, you crispy fleems. 2023 was a year, eh? My own biggest takeaway from the year is a slow but growing hate for being lied to by media. Looking at you, Ruin Johnson, to 2024 and hail the dawn. Ah, that must hail. be a, a, a gla house gla uh, onion, glass onion? 
Oh. Reference? You, you mean like, to? yeah, like watching the film and just, you don't get to figure anything out. You just have to wait until you find out what's true and what's fake. Oh, Glass Onion, man. That's one of the worst films ever. It really yes. is one of the worst films ever. I really dislike it. I hate it. And we got uh, more coming from him. This Many is, uh, more coming. coming. Yeah. Can't believe Disney got their hands on EFAB. They made Fringy Black, Rags Bisexual, and assassinated Mola's character by giving him feelings. Yeah, that well, sucks, you know, that uh, I mean, I've been told we're better in the book version, but I don't know. You just have to take everything for what it is. I just, we just strive to have the writing be good. Mm -hmm. Hey, Amorly, you hear how the creator of God of War hates how Kratos is now? Paraphrasing, he pretty much wanted Kratos to stay as cool character that doesn't have much growth and gets reset. Uh, okay, okay, uh, well, uh, too bad. He's really cool and amazing and awesome now, and, and, and someone else took him in a really uh, incredible direction, and I'm glad that they did, so... I don't know. It's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that... How many people that make these complaints that. have played it or not? Like, have actually uh, seen what story they tell. Kratos is not a nice Kratos man. Kratos really is like the, the embodiment of good virility, good masculinity. In the in like the first half of the twenty eighteen game, he's the only person he's nice to is Atreus, and that's even like and even 50, then, fifty. You know, yeah, he's quite distant and can be quite harsh. Um, all of the relationships are like developed over a long period of time, and they have to do significant things for him to open up. And the games over the two, he just gradually gets chipped away at by everything. And uh, mm -hmm. it's Until kind it of just finally comes full circle by the end. Yeah, it's just kind of how humans. And if you said like, yeah, but I don't want to see him become something else, I'd be like, okay, uh, I don't know well, what to do I guess, with that eventually. You know, I guess there is an element of you can't play the games then if you really don't want that, or you have to skip to the cutscenes like Doomer or something. Like I'm not sure. Well, oh, it's just that the story that's being offered in 2018 and Ragnarok is one where they're trying to make him considerably more dynamic. Uh, not to say that a static character is a necessarily worse character. I certainly don't well, and they use that the past works. to wedge in. They do. The, the thing that people forget is that they'll celebrate God of War 1, 2, and 3, oftentimes saying 3 is the best one, and 3 is the one that justifies all of 2018 and Ragnarok. Like, how do you think gets to where he is? It's like, watch the ending of 3. A lot of people like to forget the ending of 3, but watch the ending of 3. He He's already on the pathway. He's not a man that's yeah. happy with his decisions to destroy an entire pantheon. But, uh, you know, it's, um... It's always something you can play again and again and again. You can have the God of War 1, 2, and 3 forever. It's uh, it's in the same I vein as if someone said, like, game. I fucking hated it when they made Vader a good guy. He'd be like, okay. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I don't know what to do with it, because uh, the, the journey itself, they took so fucking long. Like, do you remember how hostile he is to uh, Brock when he first meets him? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a case of they didn't skip past the need to actually turn him into the character that he becomes at the end of uh, Ragnarok. They didn't just skip over it and have all of that development play off screen so that they could just automatically get to where they wanted to be. You know, one of my favorite things is pulls Mamiya head throughout 2018, and then when we meet them yeah, up in uh, yeah, Ragnarok, he's calling him Mamiya. Uh, and then when we get Somebody, yeah. Helios head in Valhalla, he calls him head. Yeah. It's just, Good shit. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, uh, going from calling him boy to Atreus, and then when he flips out and runs away, he calls him boy again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. One last time. Boy. And there's so many good scenes that are just representative of, uh, you know, fatherhood and the correct amount of influence and control and direction and it's it's so interesting to have a game that at the end says like it's really important to let your kids find their own way at least somewhat uh it's a really cool set it's a pity that a lot of people hate it because kratos isn't the guy that they knew from the first three which is something that is heavily influenced and addressed throughout the two games and to be honest with you it's nice that they did it in such a reserved way the most overt they get is valhalla which that's the newest thing they've done you know, they didn't they didn't do them key janglings anywhere near as much as most media would, even most media that I consider good. It's kind of It neat. felt very reserved. 
they really wanted to tell their own story, but they simultaneously didn't want to contradict anything that had come before. Not in like an overt way. I'm sure they've made some mistakes in terms of timelines or details, but you know, all those stories that get told, all the dialogue that happens in, in between missions of just talking about his life, you know, in Sparta and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, damn. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the God of War fans should be incredibly happy that their franchise didn't get annihilated like everyone else's did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, uh, there's a graveyard of ruined franchises out there now. Uh, as for uh, the guy, the one who said it, I always find it funny because everyone just makes fun of him for making the Underworld map in God of War 1, which is one of the most hated parts of all God of War. Uh... Anybody who doesn't know what it is, just just search. Let me see if I can do it. Underworld, God of War One. Just watch someone play it. Um, you know, it's it's probably not good to do a walkthrough because they'll nail it. You'll want to see a new player playing it. Uh, it's one of the most frustrating fucking experiences ever if you don't know what to do. But, you know, Kratos is uh is a particular way in that game, and I guess some people wanted him to be that way. In the Norse world as well. Like, I think a lot of people did want to see the Norse version where he goes to the, the, the lands of the Norse world, chills out, and then Thor attacks him and he kills him and then he kills everyone and then leaves the Norse world or something. I'm not even, like, denigrating that. It, would be, it could be, like, a fun thing, especially if the mechanics are focused, but they just, they made a different game. They made one that was very, very, uh, I think, meaningful story-wise. Mechanically speaking, plenty of criticism you can deliver, but... I still think it's retarded to put it on the same level mechanically as like The Last of Us or even something like the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, you know? Where it's like, oh, uh, if I was going to play any of these games, it'd be Ragnarok in a heartbeat. The only one that, like, on the hardest difficulty, uh, I mean, you know, Fringy would know this, um, myself and Metal and, and a lot of people, we, we've been trying, we try to defeat a lot of the challenges and they really require a lot of knowledge on the different layers of the combat as well as reaction time, you know? Whereas uh, The Last of Us is just broken. Well, and Suicide Squad's probably the worst of them all, where I was just like, aim, shoot, wait. Yep, and then you win. Anyway, uh, let's celebrate... Oh, wait, yeah, sorry. Uh, Mu... Wait, Mushi in, Sy... in Stifeln? Does that mean anything to you guys? Nope. Mushi in Stifeld? That's what it says. M Mushi in Stifeln? I have no idea what that is. All right. The Fallout show is set after Fallout 4 in L.A. Issue. L.A. is already a location in the NCR in Fallout 2. Fucking Bethesda should have stuck to their shit East Coast lore and not taint the good stuff. Bethesda uh, has an attitude regarding continuity and lore as if they have a cool idea they want to do, then they're going to do it and they're not going to make themselves beholden to old lore. And while I think there may be a place for that, um, and maybe doesn't that, like, doesn't that it's kind of like storylines as being canonical if they do that as well, like certain endings. It, yeah, I, I, it, it very well might, which is why all the fallouts, to my knowledge, take place in wildly different places. But we already know that, like with Fallout 4, is one of its criticisms. Like, how is the Brotherhood of Steel here? How is the Brotherhood in Fallout? Like, the Brotherhood like has no logical. There's they have no business being in Fallout 76, certainly. Um, but you know, people love the Brotherhood of Steel, and so even the Brotherhood of Steel changes from what they originally were to what they are now. So, I mean, I I mean, I think you should expect that Bethesda would. Yeah, they don't. I just don't think they give a shit. The writing has been generally pretty garbage for quite a while now. So, yeah, you don't, no surprise there. At least there certainly shouldn't be. That's how they are. Uh, Fringy looking at the blood in PIB. Red. It's red. Oh, for what? And puss and birds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was blood. That was crazy. Well, it's funny because that's like a time where it's very applicable, but the, um, that's still one of the most fundamentally like lizard brainy sort of <laughs> reactions to media that should hopefully help people understand like the the issue with blindly loving everything that gets put out in terms of damage to the legacies of a lot of the artwork that gets made because I, I never like to single out anybody in terms of an experience they're having and it doesn't necessarily mean that's what that lady was 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 thinking but someone turning on a lightsaber that's red 
And if your short circuit thought is red equals evil, but that's Anakin, but he was good a, mo a moment ago, but I guess now he's evil because red equals bad, it's just like, ugh. <laughs> it's you a know? little Pavlovian. <laughs> Yeah, and, and and it's almost it's just it's just evident that uh, Dave Filoni knows what is good enough, um, but who knows that could be what his best is is actually. Uh, we'll see. Um, it's weird when you were reading out the you played Dead Space too, right? Yes. When you read out that super chat, I thought that was a reference to the beginning of Dead Space Two. They say it's red in that. They do. Don't remember. I just remember the guy at the the guy at the beginning. Um, he he says to Isaac that uh, it's red. Your rig is red, and then he tells him to go get a health kit out of the locker. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got red on you. A shilling for the New Year meter. Thank you. I'm expecting entertainment this year from the crashing and burning of film companies. Question is, who's going first? We shall see. Um, there's plenty of losers. There might not be people that, ones that get destroyed, but there's, you would expect that there would be some that definitely uh, reconsider their strategies. Uh, saying he doesn't like onions is the most offensive thing Rags has ever said. Onions are based on, like, you, dog. Also, hello, Rags. Oh, my God. Uh, onions are, I just, I really don't like onions, so... I'm, I think it's I'm, normal to not be keen on onions. I think it's pretty, pretty, yeah, pr well, relatively so normal. There's such a fundamental ingredient in so many things. I assume you are closer to my take, maybe. That is, I like the taste, but I don't like the texture of an onion. Not really. Uh, I do not like the texture. Sometimes, in very light amounts, I could be okay with the taste, but typically not really. I'd prefer they were not in anything. What about you, Fringy? Uh, I like onions. I like them uh, in general as a, a component of meals. They have it. Three different perspectives. All spoken writing was crap, but hey, the world was all right, and the gameplay was fun and had some varied magic. But the writing made the main character unlikable. I never played uh, it. Dev did a review of it. Though. Been part of the conversation because so much of the conversation was about the cringe dialogue. That mm. uh, it was kind of unclear. It's like, well, yeah, but as a video game, is it like lame and mediocre, or bad, or is it okay? Is it is it fun? Dev said it was pretty mediocre. To I've heard that it's experience. mediocre. Yeah, because he did That's a video on it. He said it was really poorly structured, and that by the time you start to open up a lot of the magical options, the game's basically over, so you never get to really use them, and some stuff like that. And of course, the general cringe that's just just coding the entirety of the experience. I platoon. I can only catch E Fab and B sub when I'm on the night shift. Who here will let me watch Echo through review? Well, we did. Yeah, uh, yeah. Our Echo video that's came right. out after this, so yeah, there you go. And now, uh, platoon's uh, Echo video yes. is out now, so which is insane a... because I think uh, once you go even just two weeks after, a lot of people will be like, "I don't believe this ever happened." And you're like, "No, it did. It really did. It came out. It really did happen." Yeah, is video we proof? It. And they're like, "You made that up with uh, with AI," and you're like, "No, I swears I didn't." Yeah, you know, we nearly got a, a 100k views on our Echo one, I guess, because uh, people really oh. do like watching the MCU, but only through things that aren't the MCU now. Yeah, yeah. Very weird, and I wonder if there is a sector of like Disney's advisory board that are aware of this. Like, guys, do you know how much of like a fucking crazy industry there is making money off people just talking about our stuff, but that we're not getting any of that money? They're like, what does that mean? Like, I don't know. I actually don't know. I think it means that we I'm should just, probably fucking yeah. shut down. <laughs> just letting you know what the world's like out there. Uh, you can talk about that abysmal fire scene in Forspoken for nearly 20 minutes. So many elements are bad without, uh, and the whole plot is carried on happenstance. Oh, fair enough. Checked out the supercut of Oni plays, constantly predicting the plot and dialogue in Forspoken. It's almost hard to believe how generic that game is. I can believe it. It just seems like a misguided idea through and through. Mm -hmm. Just a really bad idea. Uh, really hot take. Studio with her freaking mind. Metroid Prime 2 is better. I assume they mean better than 1. Also, Platoon, watch Arcane. I think uh, he is. That, that is, is a hot it's certain, take. It's certainly a hot take, because everyone considers Prime to be, like, one of the best games. It's just so well fucking polished. It's like, 
so complete. Um, Have you played yeah. the second one? Oh yeah, Echoes. Yeah, uh, Metro I really Prime liked Echoes, is like so. the quintessential 3D. Like it is, it is Metroid translated from 2D to 3D, basically as closely, like as close to perfectly as you could reasonably expect to achieve. It's um a remarkable video game. Uh, whereas with like two if... and three, they start to. I, I, I really like 2 and 3. It's just that with those games, that was when they were starting to let's start experimenting and trying different mm -hmm. things, and I appreciate that effort. Um, but Prime, man. Ooh. I wonder if they started off by making a game that was basically a 2D game, and then they said, all right, we got our design good. Let's add that, you know, add, go through, re-go through everything. Now that we kind of have our, kind of have our 2D roadmap and then 3D-fy it. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know if that could have even been how it went because there's just the a lot of it designing of the a, levels. Yeah, as a big 3D space, uh, it's just a fundamentally different kind of challenge compared to designing it as a 2D space, and especially thinking about ways of having the world uh be interconnected when you're not just thinking on a two dimensional plane, but you also have to think about uh like three dimensions and how to connect everything together I, I that's part of what's so impressive about metroid prime is that it is a huge challenge yes it is uh podcasting is boogie's only joy in life and right no, now that might be true it isn't i don't know if it is is it i mean he might or claim. does he hate it uh no i think he likes the attention whether or not it's negative I suppose so. It's probably technically true. Uh, what is your take on Loki season two? Oh boy! <laughs> oh boy! You're in luck, man. Oh, is that like do we four or five we've had now? People be like, "Can you do this?" It's like, "Yes, we can." By gum, <laughs> just for you. That's right. Uh, some of my friends love it, but I don't buy it being good. Will there ever be an EFAP on it? EFAP TV, perhaps? Ugh. Well, what, what can I say? <laughs> yes, yes, there will. Yes, there is. <laughs> Uh, I'm sad you Dumbos couldn't give us a classic Duma debate for the new year, but Patrician TV on EFAP makes up for it. It was only a matter of time. Yeah, true. And to think, that was just his first episode. That's right, yeah. For that second you'll, one. you'll be getting more of him in another project, whatever My that may be. God. I certainly don't know. Why no, who knows? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, it's only a matter of time till you play DDLC. I guess so. I suppose it may be. Maybe. Uh, please bring along a cinematic venom for the inevitable Harry Potter EFAP movies arc. Could you imagine? We just invite him, and uh, like it's it's like we have like the funnest sort of just breakdown like shitting all over Harry Potter movies, but then we release it and everyone's like really upset. <laughs> like, I never know what's going to happen. That we made fun when... of Harry Potter. I don't know. What do you? Th what are, what's the vibe right now with people in Harry Potter movies? Are people like people? Love I don't them? know. I have no I clue. Know. I really don't know much about Harry Potter. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we would just give it, we would give it as fair a shake as possible. I know that I would like them for the performances. I th I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure those those are good, right? Like, I yeah, think just do a good so. job. I have to imagine, yeah. And then I'm trying to think of what else I like about it. I mean, we we probably have things to enjoy probably about the world. Of the production, right? And the that. production design. But the it's in that period where there's probably going to be a lot of real props and stuff in it. Yeah. I know people want us to do it, and yeah, I would happily invite uh, old cinematic venom on. It'd be fun. Yeah, I think he'd be a good vibe for that kind of show, yeah. Uh, critters, they have been crisped. My heart swells. Oh, nice. Are there any themes or concepts you haven't seen in video games before but think would lend themselves well to the medium? Themes hmm. you've never seen before? Themes? Um, the thing Problem. about it is, this, is, this could <sighs> be a little bit spicy. Answer. I feel like games are capable of exploring even more themes than films are because of the fact that interactivity lends itself to more things or a different exploration of that. things. Everything that's covered by a movie would be covered by a game. Yeah, you would have thought there's nothing a film could cover thematically that a game can't cover, but the vice versa doesn't apply. In the, in the vein that, like, Soma's interactivity is incredibly important to understanding its uh, the points it's making, while Soma is a show or something, I still think would be very effective and I would be on board with like trying to adapt something like that, like someone doing that if they did it well, uh, wouldn't quite capture a lot of 
the things that someone's going for. You'd have to try and account for that. Um, I don't think of what other games, like, their thematic value takes advantage of the fact that you are playing. I think uh, Spec Ops The Line would count. Line. Yeah, Spec Ops The Line is, it, it only works as a video game. Um, I mean, I think there's, you... there... yeah, go ahead, keep going. I was just going to say that if you may, you could adapt it into a film or a TV show, but the interactive nature of that story is a big part of what it has to say, even down to when you die, which is something that you're not going to be able to facilitate as like a fail state in a film or a TV show, having loading screens that confront you as the player directly. Um, that's something that you get from a video game. Mm -hmm. it's, it seems to me that the really interesting thing with video games is the idea of constructing your mechanics and design in such a way that they um, force the player's emotional reactions to align very closely with those of the character that they're playing as. Um, that that's something that's really interesting to tap into as an experience. Um, but that, I guess that would be less of a theme and more of just a general observation of one of the things that games can do in a unique way that's difficult to emulate uh, in film or television or in a book. Um, yeah, so obviously that's not quite uh, the question, but uh, like I said, I don't really have an answer to uh, what, yeah, what do I want a covered question. in a game that I think hasn't been covered yet thematically, or that I haven't seen. It's like, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know where to start with that one. I'm... It's not a bad question, it's just a tough one to really... Yeah, it's like a, a tough one to answer without like follow-ups. I'm interested in like exploring almost anything uh you know in in the format of storytelling i'm not sure there's something that i'm like waiting to see explored in a sense of like a topic i, I want to see you know like an amazing lovecraft adaptation as opposed to things that like a bloodborne where it takes parts of it and i really enjoy what it does with it i want like a full extensive and and a thing that regards like existentialism would be really an existential threats and and uh how we deal with everything you know like a really all-encompassing big project and i could picture that being really good in a game a big old rpg maybe yeah you gotta play mass effect sometime that's not what i'm talking about i know enough about okay. mass effect to say that i uh there was that call of cthulhu game that I played and I was like immensely disappointed. I was this close to making a video on it. I, if it had made me slightly really? more angrier, I would have. Interesting. I did not know about this. Or maybe you told us a long time ago. I can't remember when it, when did that game come out? Because I'm trying to think of the timeline of what I was doing. Oh, okay. Ooh, game. I think it's one that's actually like more favored typically by people. And I was, I was not happy with it at all. As a game and an adaptation. 2018. October, so it was a year after TLJ. Yeah, I guess I just wasn't talking to you guys about that. Unless I did and we forgot, but either way. I don't remember anything about it, so. Crispy it came Critters. Out, we talked about it. No shit. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Crispy Critters. Also, this Keep one says, I, uh, I grew up surrounded by water. An endearing meme. I grew up surrounded by water. What a stupid line. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, that the fact that the line it doesn't go anywhere. No, is what it's just like, an observation that's it's, weird. Yeah, because there's no follow up with it or like thoughts attached to it. It really does come across as like the ramblings of a delusional dementia <laughs> man. You know. Yeah. It's like, do you want to? My water. Oh. Like, All right. Okay, oh, Grandpa, like go and sit down. Like you were building up to something. No. 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 I just Which grew is up like, surrounded by water. Isn't the easy slam dunk for the writers the fact that the person who grew up in a planet covered by water is now in charge of a planet where water is a scarce resource that has to be purchased and like found, you know? Like, mm -hmm. isn't that like, wouldn't that be the interesting observation to make? Oh, he's just going to say he grew up surrounded by. Okay. Well, oh, all right. Okay. Never mind. Isn't it like really not prompted too? Because the guy is saying like they've been stealing water and he's like, I grew up surrounded by it. You're like, yeah, it's, it's okay. like, why would you tell me this? It doesn't help me. It doesn't tell me that you have any greater insight. Granny Xena's introduction scene is still a masterpiece. Roller coaster of emotions, all chaos, all granny. Uh, Atomic Heart mm, reference. That is not a roller coaster of emotion, no. <laughs> uh, for Apple Plus, did y'all have any thoughts on For All Mankind or Ted Lasso? I didn't see either. 
I've heard that Ted Lasso is really good, but I don't really know much about it other than hearing that it's apparently good. Mm. Confirmed. Rags is on Order 66 denier. Anti Jedi. I am. I well, am. I, mean, I don't think it happened. The funny meme at this point. I mean. Yeah, if... like that's the uh, yes. Yeah, because for everyone joke, they show a, a surviving, oh, yeah. they usually show a bunch of people getting killed in that context, right? Like for everyone that's. Uh, getting out and i think that there's been this like reaction of like you understand that even if 0.5 percent survived then it would be a lot of jedi and it's like sure but the way it's portrayed in almost everything up to a point was that basically it was a wipeout but now like they just keep being like ah yes but did you know about blah 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 and they do it over and over again and, and most of the time it's like meaningless. the jedi get up to very significant events in terms of their consequence on the uh on the the fate of the universe or the galaxy rather you talking about like, because like Reva, it, it was self-contained. It's, it's like you you survive. It's one thing to say like, oh, they survived, but they didn't really. They weren't in a position they to do anything. Low. And they, yeah, exactly. Compared to they survived and massively influenced the events of that uh, interwar period in the Star Wars universe. So who are you talking about? Uh, well, it's like uh, what the the guy in the 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 games, right? Uh, Cal. Like that guy, he's clearly been getting up to crazy shit, right? Yeah, people are Obi waiting for how he's going to be. Up to a crazy adventures. Well, Obi Wan doesn't count because we knew he survived. Oh, sure, but but like that, it was over the course of those years. It wasn't just laying low. He went on a grand adventure in the meantime, dramatically influencing events. I don't think that would apply though, because we're talking about Order sixty six survivors. Oh, sure, um... That weren't, like, established to have survived after the... Yeah, yeah, I, I get you. Uh, in terms of just adding on... Well, Ahsoka, right? She's, like, another new character that gets added on as being a major player in influencing events, uh, including during the that period as well, the 20 years. I can't remember, like, uh, so she was... Well, was she, she was in Rebel, right? And she... Oh, well, she was created in... After Revenge of the Sith. The Clone Wars, I think, was the end of the 2000s. Yeah, I don't know enough about her story. Obviously, I know that she's becoming the most important character in the Star Wars universe. Oh, it was that she fought Darth Vader, right? And then the world between worlds, and that was uh, that was during that period as well. So that's some crazy shit happening in that time as well. Well, the thing is, because who I'm thinking about, right, is Jar Jar Jedi, who's got nothing. Um, the Jedi that escaped, the Obi-Wan met up with, who just got killed. Reva, who was self-contained in the story. I was actually going to go the opposite direction of what you said, and the most of these survivors that they have just get killed anyway. Right, so it doesn't really contribute much. I just, yeah, I was. It's, it's almost it's kind of funny because it's like the reverse criticism. It's there's no they didn't reach the middle ground, which would have been probably the better way to go, which is that some Every of them have influence, in while, some of them don't. One, yeah, who mostly they just got a new job in. Because, yeah, I would agree. Like, there, Ahsoka's ridiculous. The, I... Like, she's like a magnet for all things interesting in the universe of Star Wars across all time. It's annoying. Yeah. Um, but then, who else? It's like, Baby Yoda? Like, <laughs> right. <God>. Star Wars is <laughs> well, so cool. Well, remember, it's also, it's also, like, characters who aren't Jedi. Because, I mean, what about, um... What about, uh... uh God damn it. Uh, Ray Winston's character... Help me out. Wait. That... Wait, sorry. No, 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 no. Wait. What's his name in Ahsoka? Uh, the, the... What was Balin? that? Balin. Oh, uh... Ray... It's not Ray Winston, because that's... You... No, I, that was what I was saying. I was like, Ray wait, Stevenson. Ray Winston. Hold on. I mixed him up. Yeah, Ray Stevenson's character. He was around during the Order 66 as well, and look at how, like, major of a player he was in, uh, in Ahsoka. Uh, yet another character who survived Order 66. Have it we... would be one thing if every once in a while we bumped into someone who was Force-sensitive but barely trained or untrained, and they just sort of used it in their jobs on the sly. But we never get that. We never get the bounty hunter or the mercenary or the person who uses yeah, the Force that they can only do... Jedi. Yeah, they, they, they didn't go to the Academy. And these people are all over the galaxy, you know? But we never get to see what it is to be well, one of those people. the same people. way that people uh, adopt certain spiritual practices without fully buying into whatever the uh, 
uh, yeah. the ideology or the religion or the philosophy yeah, just, from which those spiritual practices arise. Yeah, just people who are self-taught or parents who are like, oh, yeah, my kids uh, got the force. I'm not letting the fucking Jedi weirdos take them away from <laughs> me. And like, no, I love my children. They're not going to go in. Like, we never explore any of that shit. Um, well, no just like we never explore that there are differing uh, perspectives on the Force and like the, the Jedi, the Jedi religion, vaguely, if you want to call it that, is very, um, it's all, there's not much disagreement on it. Everybody seems to generally it's kind of totalitarian, hold totalitarian, yeah. It. It's very... You don't have other branches that have slightly different views on it. You don't have slightly more, um, you don't have hyper pacifist Jedis or more militant Jedis or uh, like just different the, um, attitudes on how to cultivate. Stuff. Probably, or but you. certainly not certainly not in Disney Star Wars, that's for sure. Yeah, what happens if someone is just like, I no, I'm not gonna go to your Jedi cult. I don't care. I, I no, I don't want to do that. But you'll become a dark sider. It's like no, no, I'm not evil. I just don't want to be I don't want to be a Jedi. I wanna like I wanna have a family and do a career. Like, I'm well, not going to let my entire life be with, defined uh, by this. I'm not going to let you kidnap gray me. Gray Jedi, right? Gray Jedi was meant to be kind of like addressing that, the idea of somebody who's not a Sith, but they're not very aligned with a uh, Jedi either. Yeah, that's what, like, what Qui-Gon is. Uh, I don't think that's what Qui-Gon actually is, though. Because um, he's, uh, think, yeah, he's... Because he's still, you know, he's a Jedi in the Jedi Order and everything. He was just more unconventional. He wasn't allowed on the council, right? Or he quit it because he didn't like their uh, practices. Which is, yeah, that's uh, an interesting choice. So, man. Are you allowed? To, yeah, are like, are you allowed to leave the, you know, being a Jedi and just be like, yeah, yes. fuck this, I quit. Well, I'm gonna go and. Or well, she got pushed out, I think. I thought she quit. Uh, she's she'd want to come back, or whatever, right? I think it w I thought was it that she kind of got pushed out and then they, she quit, got framed you know, for like, something. You can't and then, fire me. I quit, kind of thing. I think she got cleared out in terms of the framing, and then she said, that, "I think it was like the fact that I was even framed and that it was believed is enough for me to say that the Jedi are like I'm out," which they had to ah, do to get it out of the continuity for Revenge yeah. of the Sith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Qui Gon is apparently described as a gray Jedi. In oh, okay. uh, the sort of the stuff that was at first canon, but then it was decanonized by Disney. Ah, right. Which you know, I guess yeah. up to you at this point, which one you consider more meaningful. Um, I doubt it's going to be Disney stuff, though. Yeah, because I just I'm sick of the Jedi and the Sith, and they're just it's just not really they don't do anything interesting with them ever. Um, Ahsoka threatened to potentially get into that, but it never did. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's all just lame. I don't know, like, the Jedi that pretty much every single one of us would probably actually be, um, if we were in that world, is the Jedi that we never learn anything about and doesn't seem to exist, so. Uh, but, 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 done anything neat in real life lately? High ranks. Neat in real uh... life? Nothing major. I've got things mm. planned, like trips and stuff of that nature, but... Yeah, I was gonna say nothing Neat? newsworthy, just normal stuff, human stuff. Yeah, I was, I was out for a walk and I saw a koala hanging out in the in the tree, so that was that was fun. Mm. Oh, that is neat. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing too special. Not not lately. I don't go out as much when it's the winter, uh, because over here winter is cold, so I don't like the cold and yeah. But now it's starting to get nice and warm. Spring is on its way and the weather's nice, so I've been you know going out more now and. But yeah, nothing major. Uh, Thrawn reminds me of that Johnny Bravo episode where he wins a martial arts duel and the enemy master walks up to him and says some random phrase. What does that mean? It means I win anyway. Um, do you mean just like the coping? Because, man, he by the time Thrawn comes back around, I think people will be like, okay, he'll get it right this time. And if he fails it again and he does that same copy thing, like, yeah, whoa, <laughs> it's going to hit even harder. Have you seen Citizen Kane? If so, what is your opinion? It's a great movie. Um, absolutely deserving of its reputation. Uh, what movie, sorry? Citizen, Citizen Kane. Kane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it, definitely it is deserving a, of its reputation. It is, it is a good movie, yeah. Um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Uh, maybe we'll cover it someday. 
like a like the that'd, be, that'd, that'd oh. be fun that'd be fun yeah we have a it would be an interesting like classic movies arc the casablanca's citizen kane gone with the wind that kind of stuff Gollum, Wizard greater... of Oz, oh. all that stuff. Gollum greater than Starfield. Gollum greater than Starfield. I um, mean, from a certain point of view, maybe from a certain point of view, actually, yeah. But you know, Gollum's pretty bad. Just saying. Stuckman in robot voice. You'll forget Ezra Miller's crimes while watching this. I don't think he said that, right? Wasn't it? Uh, no, that was name? like wasn't it a production person. Oh, was it? Know. Was it her? Did she say that? I don't know. Someone said it, but yeah, someone said it somewhere for some reason. <laughs> that's <laughs> one of those. Said. That's one of those dystopian lines that you just don't mm -hmm. say. I guess it it I'm belongs in like a satire thing. Change. Like it would it would be good in Nerd yeah. Crew. Um, what do y'all think of debating as nerdrotic, etc., on wokeness in media? Could be a nice discussion, not fueled by bad faith and malicious intent. We I would... don't think it would end up being a debate, and I... We just would want references that relate to whatever definition they're using. So it works for everybody, basically. Because I think the, the big war on that will often happen from everyone misinterpreting each other's sides uh, and using, like, the fringer ones to represent arguments that aren't Right, there, at this point, there's no denying a, um, an interest in creating media that represents values that are not in, even remotely subtle, right? South Park's making fun of it. I think that it's like misguided in a lot of ways, and that it's often gotten embarrassing. I was actually um, talking to a friend about how uh, I was getting tired of Harley Quinn, and they were like, why are you bringing this up now? Like, uh, what was the newest thing with her? And I was like, oh yeah, they don't know about Suicide Squad. And I was saying that there's a part, and Rags, I think you saw the supercut, so you'd at least have seen I've that seen bit. I have seen the supercut, yes. When Boomerang says, like, oh, are you sad because you're a sidekick? And then she, like, punches him, and he falls over, and she's like, I'm not a sidekick, I'm amazing. And you just sort of yeah, sit there like, that part's really gosh. like, oh, god damn, god. And you know, you, you, you're you like, oh, what's the problem? You're like, well, I could talk about how it's just bad character writing or the effect it'll have on an audience, but like, I can just tell that the person who wrote that felt insecure about writing for uh, Harley Quinn and worried that she wouldn't be able to stand on her own two feet, but if she writes certain lines, she will. And th that's one of them. That's one of those ones Instead that gets Instead of those lines actually calling attention to the fact that that's something that you're insecure about. Exactly. And, and so it's like, it's, uh, you know, your goal to show that Harley Quinn can be just as good as Joker has now backfired into making her so fucking annoying that no one wants her in any more DC content. And that feels like the era we're in. Guys. And I think, yeah, broadly yeah, speaking, yeah. Az and Gary would agree with that. I don't think they would... Oh, you know. yeah, I think so, yeah, absolutely. Um, speaking of RE4 Remake, are you ever going to play and stream the DLC, Mola? Um, so I said, I think at the time, if I heard enough people praising it and recommending it, I would, but honestly, it kind of disappeared pretty quickly. Um, the Ada Wong stuff, right? Separate ways, I think. Yeah. I'm sure it's good, but I didn't hear enough people say, like, oh man, I really enjoyed that, you need to check it out. I think As played it, I don't even know if he completed it. It's sort of, um, I think it would, I absolutely would have played it if, if it was out with it, but it wasn't enough to make me return to the game. But the next time I do return to the game, I probably will play it. What about you guys? I think yeah, that's definitely going to be something way. I end up... Yeah, when I go back to the game, you know, go through another playthrough of it, enjoy it, that will be on the... That'll be on the menu. Uh, when are you going to finish Velma? Little Platoon says it gets real good at the end. Never. I never watched never. it. Never. Nope. Not watching it. It's a gross TV show. Yep, I, hate I hate it. it. I actually hate it. Yeah. I'm sure everyone will enjoy covering season two, but even then, we will not be jumping in. So, uh, God, what a sad state for just for what a sad addition to the world of animation, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, do not remake RE One. Let fixed cameras stay a thing. Well, they did remake RE One twice, re didn't they? Yeah. Also, yeah, you can remake it, and yeah, you can remake it and have it with a fixed, fixed camera. camera perspective. I wouldn't I think play it. Also, remaking it's it thing, without but... the fixed camera perspective doesn't take away from the existence of the originals with the fixed camera. And it could be really awesome. You could. Yeah, it could be. You could remake RE4 with fixed camera. I wouldn't say it's something that I would necessarily want, but I'm not going to say it wouldn't make for a game that people would like. 
Yeah, it's not my thing, but, you know, it's an option. And then someone just said, it's Doc, a classic Ethan yeah. Winters line. Classic Ethan Winters. <laughs> classic uh, Ethan yeah. Winters. RE9 should be Leon training Ashley as a new agent. I don't know about that. I don't just because of the experiences of RE4. I don't believe that Ashley is the person that becomes like a fucking agent. I, no. I'm sure she goes back home and tries to live a normal life, sort of thing. I mean, hasn't yeah, it been a while since there's been like that. a new one with with Jill, right? Like a new adventure. Jill Valentine. Her. So that seems like the more likely possibility, right? Yeah. Um... Soma spoiler. Shouldn't Simon die of explosive decompression after his suit is breached while killing the WoW? I love the game, but it bugs me and influences my decision because I don't want to see him just die. Thoughts? It's confusing. I'd need to go into detail on or figure out exactly what the nature of the suit is, because of course he is it's a human body with goo and the the like lenses attached to it, and then the power suit on top to prevent like uh, the question is: Is there even a compression in in the suit, rather than just the suit acts as armor to prevent being crushed, as the other suit would not? As in the other it suit, it might essentially just be how he, how his locomotivation happens. Uh, that yeah, like might you, you, the other suit would be crushed, so he can't use that mechanically, right? It's not because he needs to have he needs a body that can move. He doesn't need air. Suit, we would. Yeah, the suit might function as just like essentially the muscles. That's what he moves so that he can have a body. Yeah, I think that's the that would be the difference between us down there and breaching an arm and then getting killed versus him. Um, but I can't be sure. I'd have to check, and I understand. Uh, you know, on on future playthroughs, that you'd be like, "Oh shit, did I just kill myself by doing that?" In terms of getting getting crushed. Uh, the Mario movie did reference correctly. If you know it, then it adds to the film. But if you don't know it, it doesn't take away from the film. As opposed to Star Wars, which goes, "Hey guys, it's the Millennium Falcon. Remember that by toys." I mean, I'll definitely yeah. take Mario stuff over like a lot of modern key jangling any day of the week. Yeah, because yeah, it literally is just like, hey, there's an R wing on that TV. It is nothing as a as a thing that takes away. But if you recognize it, you're like, hey, R wing, yeah, that's neat. fun. Yeah. They'll get Michael Waldron to write the Smash Brothers movie. No, nah, they might. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, they got the guy do, who did Tross, right, for uh, Zelda, so. Jeez, how does it happen? How does it happen? I don't know how it happens. I don't get he's, it. He's got to have dirt on someone. He's got to have blackmail material or something. It's it's Occam's razor. It's got to be. <laughs> that has to be the reason. Next for Nintendo and Illumination, building out the Smash Brothers cinematic universe? Maybe. Probably another Mario movie. Mm. Nintendo respects their properties. The biggest boon slash issue is they refuse to make a game if they can't make it special. That's why there's no F Zero. Um, it's it's kind of an interesting sort of problem to have where like you have uh I think it was Miyamoto doing an interview where he was genuinely stunned by the idea that people wanted another F Zero game because he felt like, yeah, but we did GX. That's that's it, you know, like that's that's all that we can think of. There's no there's no like revolutionizing it from there. Not sort of understanding that for a lot of people, they would just be happy if they made another F Zero GX, just with new levels, new new vehicles, you know, rather than like mm -hmm. a reinvention. Um, give me that Mario Sonic crossover. Is that possible? Do you think? Uh, again, I, it seems like it's going to get real complicated because Universal did the Mario movie, Sony is doing the Zelda movie, and Paramount did Sonic. So I, I, would, I would be baffled to see that kind of, you know, stu cross-studio collaboration. Spider-Man is already be... kind of remarkable as an arrangement. It would certainly be unprecedented, though perhaps yeah. we are in such times. Perhaps. Um, Maybe I wouldn't count on it, but I, I wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily it discount it. But yeah. don't I wouldn't bet on it. But maybe, maybe. Uh, Y'all gonna catch up on super chat soon? Hi rags. Hello. Um, ma. One day when there's less going on. Yeah. They are. Uh, they're all coming out in a regular fashion, as with the uh, TVs, regular episodes. 
star grifts, you know, but trying to trying to make it all consistent so uh, that you guys, you're almost to the point of getting a video every day now on Moodle Alerts. So it's crazy. Yeah. I wonder if uh, any of you were able to keep up. Who knows? Yeah. Mahler and Fringy in particular, and, you know, the editors that we've got, they're working very, very hard to bring you guys a bunch of stuff. So certainly hope you enjoy it. Watching EFAP is the only thing that brings me joy. Aww. Yeah. That's sad. Uh... That, that meme has legs, have, man. Uh, some, yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, the next video game adaptation should be Seaman from the Dreamcast. Who owns the rights now? Oh, well, I mean, if it was on the Dreamcast, it's probably Sega, right? I would imagine mm. so. Well, could have been third party, but... Uh, I won't be able to watch all the live, but I'm hanging out with an old friend instead. Also, hi, Rax. Hello. Yeah. Hey, it's good to hang out with old friends. You can always watch us again on the replay. So, you know, hang out with your old friends. Yeah. Invite your old friend to watch EFAP with you. Uh, 2023 saw the release of Hullabaloo, a Kickstarter animation by veteran Disney 2D animator James Lopez, funded over a decade ago. The result was lukewarm. Not helped that I noticed that Carsten Fitch Fitchelman was in the credits the CEO behind the Gollum game. Oh. Huh. I hope connection. he didn't end up making a deal with the devil to make that project happen. And then to follow up, they say, uh, to the breeding halls. Probably because we were talking about the Gollum. The breeding halls, yes. <laughs> halls specifically designed for breeding. I like it. What are some of your favorite Cartman moments? Oh, I mean, look, Scott Tenneman, like, the ending of that episode is a it's a it's Classic. a boring choice, but it's a good choice because it is it is one of the best Cartman moments. Yeah. Uh, I've really enjoyed Awesome as like a, a Cartman and Butters episode. Um I remember something that always killed me was when they got to LA and then <laughs> You know, he's like, Asimo needs to dispense liquids, and then just goes into the bathroom, takes off the, takes off the, uh, the cardboard box on his head, and he's just, like, drenched in sweat and bags <laughs> just like, ah! Like, yeah. and then he, just eating some, uh, I think he ate toothpaste, because he just needed to eat, because he wasn't allowed to eat. And then, um, oh, man, in the part when, um, when, when, uh, Butters is, like, putting all of the money into envelopes, and he's like, Maybe Asimo should have some of that after all. Asimo came up with the ideas and stuff. And then Bada saying, no, this is going to go to needy children in third world countries. <laughs> and then Cartman just goes, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> It was just, it was a funny idea that he ended up having to take so far because Butters had dirt on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, God. God. Episode. My referencing the only reason I know about Osimo is because Random Film Talk uses the Osimo episode as a as a good example of an element of storytelling as it, when he compares it to how The Hobbit does it poorly. Uh, hmm. So if you ever get around to watching those videos he did, he will reference Osimo. Um, you know, a moment that I remember for some reason. I think it's just because it felt like absolutely in character and real and that has probably happened in real life at some point with some people but they all go to KFC they've brought home <laughs> the KFC <laughs> yeah, and about. they're like you can't have a KFC until you help bring in the shop and they're like oh okay and Cartman I think isn't he like yeah come on guys like he's like trying to be yeah, he says, if we all do it we can eat the KFC you know it'll, it'll be quicker to get back to the KFC and then he mocks walking over <laughs> and then to the car. gets to the bucket and takes out the pieces just starts eating all the skin off all of them <laughs> and uh puts and them all back, back in. in all right let's eat colonel <laughs> Cartman you ate the skin off of every piece of chicken <laughs> and then and then Kenny cries yeah he just start crying <laughs> feel really sad that was another really good Cartman and Butters episode where Cartman is convinced that he's a ghost that he died because everybody starts ignoring him but oh, obviously so Butters doesn't and then he <laughs> and then and then Cartman he he thinks he needs to do a good deed to move on and then he finally does the good deed and then all the all the boys are like 
hey, what you did in there was really cool, Cartman. You know, we're going to stop ignoring you now. And then he, he's like, you son of a bitch, Butters. What? <laughs> you told me I was a ghost. <laughs> I thought you were one. Well, I remember, like, like in the uh, doing his job, they're going, like, goodbye, goodbye. goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> I'll see you from time to time. As <laughs> he's waving his hands in front of him yeah. like he's going to disappear. And then the first time he did it and it didn't pan out, he destroyed Butters' room and getting him in trouble with uh with his parents. Which uh, reminds me of the great one of the greatest Butters moments is him punching his dad in the balls <laughs> when he was wearing a fake Oculus VR headset. <laughs> uh. Remember the scene where Cartman totally breaks down this poor woman, the nanny, about having a dying uterus lol? Oh uh, yeah, that was uh that's another uh, like classic episode, the the dog whisperer one. Yeah. Where like they bring in Super Nanny and he just breaks her down. Meanwhile, they bring in the dog whisperer and his strategies are incredibly effective. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the part he just keeps doing the little nip. The it's like it, it works easily well on a on a child. I'm asserting dominance, like in, in a non-aggressive way. And then the part that the part where uh because I brought over KFC and it's like you know, we're, we're going to eat the chicken, and he will only eat the chicken when he's submissive. And he's like, oh, oh, okay, can I have some chicken, please? He's like, no, now he's lying. <laughs> you can see he's still aggressive, dominant. He just starts screaming at him. But then uh, that had a really cool ending as well, where, like, he actually grows and learns. But then that, that was, that's a good example of, like, just the, the quality of the writing in South Park, that he goes on an arc of actually becoming well-behaved and considerate. Uh, but the root of the problem is that it's his mom who enables his behavior. Uh, and then it just sets him back on the path to being regular old Cartman, because she's lonely. Is there a reason, or is it an issue, that all of the other kids still hang out with and are friends with him, despite well, how terrible they, he is? They would say they're not friends with him, that they think he's an asshole. Um, what, are you saying like a problem from a character perspective? Yeah, like a character or writing, is that like an issue that they always, like tolerate him in their presence or that they tend to be in a group all the time when he would be like ostracized and no one would get anywhere near him and everyone would hate him there are episodes where that uh, happens um yeah there are several episodes a lot of the time Cassidy though it's just a matter of the four of them meet up right and that he they're at the bus stop yeah you know yeah they all go to the same bus stop and uh it's it's kind of it's it's kind of interesting because you know kyle will often it, I mean, it's something that they play around with. It's the idea that for as much as they apparently hate each other, Kyle and Cartman are pretty inseparable. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to split them apart. Uh, in a certain sense, they both kind of rely on each other. Mm. Um, and and I mean, they even just have like regular and and it's still the normal thing of just sometimes, like like I mean, there was a time when uh when uh you remember when they destroyed the Beaver Dan? That was uh that was just Stan and Cartman just playing on a. Uh, <laughs> that was just some random guy's boat that he said was his uncle's boat and then crashed it into the beaver dam and flooded the town. And meanwhile, everybody else was panicking, but nobody went to save them. <laughs> and then there was a part where the, the kids wanted to go to the town and save them, and instead they crashed into an oil refinery, and then all of the oil leaks out around the town and sets on fire, and one of the guys on the roof is like, Oh! Oh, thanks! That's, that's real helpful! <laughs> this is much better, yeah! The tank theme is very well made piece of music for creating deep fear in your gut whenever you hear it. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, boom. yes. Good old Left 4 Dead. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I have a lot of really good memories of playing that a shit ton when it came out, and yeah, um, did get a sense of like, all right, everyone, here comes a fucking tank, and it always felt significant and impactful, and that we're very likely not going to get through it without taking so, like some kind of cost. Good shit. There's probably pl a lot of games where like the overtime music or the round almost over uh, music, you know, kind of has that same effect of you know like oh shit, game's almost over. Definitely. We really gotta get our shit together. Uh, Empire has a few flaws. A noticeable one would be how eighty eighty armor becomes explosive when they've fallen down. I mean, because when they're shot, they explode. After they've fallen down, the uh... yeah, when it falls over, they the snow speeder shoot it and then it blows up. Yeah, I mean it's you'd have the to. The ATATs assume... are, I think, kind of a weak design. Uh, 
So well, they're weak. They like for, thematically um, work, but well, and they're iconic. But they, when you consider all of the material they have at their hands, you'd think there's got to be a better way or a better design. You know, like the the all terrain. What are they called? All terrain assault something assault transports. I think. And it's like, I mean, they're pretty fucking slow and. They are Very pretty slow, easily to manipulate and destroy to an extent. Yeah, no turrets. They have a very narrow field of view at the front. They have no anti-air capabilities, essentially. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, the ATSTs, I totally get those. Um, but, yeah, I think that the ATATs are weak design. But, like, thematically, they're very fearsome, very iconic. But, uh, yeah, the... Uh, not good. There's a lot of great designs in Star Wars, though, that I really like, even in the prequels. Like, even from the first episode, the, the droid tanks, I think, are really cool. The way they hover, they have all the different weapon systems on them. They have the turret on top I that really spins like around. Fighters. TIE Fighters are neat. TIE Fighters are cool. Um, I think the, the big issue with TIE Fighters is probably from the side, they have a massive profile. Uh, but, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely neat. It was a uh, because there's a whole bunch of them, right? I think the what it was was Vader using a tie interceptor at the end of. He's got a he's got a special one. He's always had a special one. Yeah, I think it's like it's actually Vader's tie fight or something like that. I don't know if yep. they have specific uh, like codes for the designs or whatever, but I think I mentioned it on Stargraph. Like tie interceptors are one of my favorite. Like yeah, they versions. look great. They look really good. Yeah, those. They have this, yeah, the way that the, the wings have those points that are facing forward. It's an aggressive design. Um, yeah, they're, they're, it's a really great look. It's so good, yeah. Now that theme from when they're on attacking on Hoth is in my head. Good. Uh, can confirm Hufflepuff is the gay house. I was sorted into True. Hufflepuff. Gay actor Michael Douglas was too. Also Ellen <laughs> DeGeneres. Ah. Well, if gay actor Michael Douglas was, I mean, that solves that. Uh, Jeremy Parrish makes great content. Check my man out, especially if you want to learn more about old games. Jeremy right. Parrish. Gotcha. Advice on getting your friends into EFAP who have been skeptical of y'all's viewpoints prior, claiming toxic fandom without watching your content. Hmm. Um, You might have them... Maybe not EFAP episodes, but EFAP, uh, like, TV or EFAP movies on stuff that we like. Start them off with our Lord of the Rings might be a good way to do it. Uh, have There's us cover a, something that we really like. There are, like, 17 strategies here. Like, first of all, if it depends on the friend. So if there's someone who's very far gone, like, to the point of thinking we're Nazis or whatever, that one's going to be tough. I don't think you're going to dig them out of that. Um, you'd have to find some kind of collaborative project we've done with someone they like. And then we know yeah, them maybe that. guests that we've had on. If they're a person who's just casually heard that we're kind of bad and doesn't care to find out anything else, then yeah, I think what Rag said. So like, try and find out what what kind of stuff they like that we like, and then set them on that. A good example might be the Hill House coverage we did. That uh, was yeah. pretty, um, you know, even-handed and very celebratory of storytelling. If they like Hill House, which a lot of people do, that might be a good start to show what we kind of do. And then, um, you know, funner stuff, and then once they understand that's what we're about, they can probably just get on with normal stuff. Broadly speaking, that's probably the strategy, but then you could try and just argue it, um, but I just don't know how close you are with these people or how much they'd be interested, right? You could be like, I just, uh, you could pull the card of, like, do you not trust me? Like, I've watched them extensively, and I know that they're not the thing you're saying. You could try that. It doesn't always work. But, um, best of luck, I suppose. Hi, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas. I'm gay. Oh, hey there. Hey there. Good morning, being gay. Good morning, Vietnam. Have you guys seen that movie? I I'm have. Not yet. Uh, it's good shit. Remember he won this... an Oscar for that, didn't he? Well, he would have earned it. Um. Uh, remember the Star Wars gangster raps? Is that from one of the Wii games or whatever? Or is that something else? Or, what, or is that from the uh, dance game uh, that they did? The connect. We, yeah, they, yeah. They connect. Oh, connect, uh, right. Yeah. Han Solo. Han Solo. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Imagine oh, a world where Kathleen Kennedy wasn't an insane person and we got a Bespin section in the Disney park. 
Should have just made it OT and prequels if you really want the money. It should have been. Yeah. They really were banking hard, hoping that, uh, um, hoping the, uh, that the sequel stuff would really take off. Uh, do you think we'll ever get another perfectly written character like Tywin Lannister? Should we, yeah, we have, we have them popping up here and there maybe sometimes. Perfectly is a complicated word. Um, you know, it's uh, we've got plenty to work with from history and sort of ones that can come close in the modern era of like maybe they're talking about long term well written characters in like mm. T V and movies. Um yes, I, I believe we'll have more to come over time. I mean I'm I'm optimistic about how you know, give it however many years and we'll we'll enter a better age again. Because uh, it just I just I don't know, I feel like we're getting little little uh notifications or, or aspects of culture that are just noticing and moving on and changing minds on different things uh, in the past even like year I I believe in the whole like everything comes in waves and counterbalances happen and I just yeah I'm hoping that we get to a point where we go whoa that year had like one movie that we didn't like holy shit that'd be, that'd be real cool yeah it would be really cool and um, hopefully some kind of resurgence in a couple of the different parts of the industry that we all miss, like practical effects, uh, gets to be reignited. Uh, and, and writing, of course, so yes, uh, hopefully. And secondly, do you agree with the statement to begin with? That Tywin is perfectly written? I don't know about that. It's complicated. I always hesitate to say anything is perfectly written, right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's an accolade that you want to be very, very conservative in your dispensation of. I'd have to think about it. I'm enjoying Definitely Lego. Definitely up there. Yeah, I'm enjoying Lego Skywalker Saga. Took a bit, but I got into the swing of it. But at 25 hours, I'm enjoying it so far because I'm gay. Oh wow! Nice. I think I might have hated it, but that was on launch, and maybe it's better by now. Maybe they've actually added a whole bunch of things in and fixed a whole bunch. Yeah, I remember watching your playthrough of that. It didn't look. Uh... Especially as a fan of the uh, prequel and OT the Lego originals? games. Yeah. Uh, even yeah, just. Play that shit on GameCube, and boy, it was that good was times. good. I actually wonder if Crystal Skull's indie line "I like Ike" was why they wanted to destroy the character. Clearly, indie didn't like communists. Um, few did back then. Um, I mean, but... like, like we don't even need motive for why they would destroy indie. They, they, you could watch the movie and tell that they were like interested in this that thing where they're like oh we need to go over like who he is and what he represents and address the flaws and the fuck-ups of the character when you're just sitting there like what and then if you mm -hmm. get someone who's not even remotely good at doing that you end up with something that looks just hyper malicious but i mean they've had mm -hmm. their repercussions for it well yeah indiana jones is a, a series is considerably less profitable than it used to be very dead not as dead as Willow. No, uh, yeah. Finished forever. Uh, uh, yeah, Willow's fucking dead. They killed that shit and took it off streaming service so fast. And as someone who's seen all of the Willow episodes, holy fuck, that is bad. Mm -hmm. um, it might be. Ooh, it's. Uh, if it wasn't for like the space and time shit that Loki and some other stuff pulls, it's definitely <laughs> in contention for worst show if, if it's probably the worst fantasy so a uh, fantasy show i've ever seen i don't which, even know what uh, it's which has got stiff competition <laughs> just so everyone remembers yeah Wheel i don't even time, know what i would rings of power the witcher though i haven't seen two of those i haven't seen witcher or wheel of time rings of power is definitely very very bad yeah um i think that rings of power I'd, it's not a, it, I get technically it's an advantage in the sense of Rings of Power is kind of like classic bad um, in every way where like all the characters basically all the characters suck the plot makes no sense it has nothing like going for it it's just a shitty show but um, Willow is kind of like a different animal it's mm. oh boy uh, I don't care if I'm an hour behind I want an R-rated Bayonetta movie do it cowards also high rags hello yeah, it'd be fun. Bandit's probably, <clears throat> probably not popular enough from the perspective to warrant uh, a film. Yet Willow is to make a TV show. 
Well, I mean, clearly they made a mistake, didn't they? <laughs> That's what they I mean. Make on, another mistake. Yeah. Just make it with things that we want to see. <laughs> make it with a cool idea, yeah. They banked on nostalgia pretty hard, um, but they didn't do anything with it. The more that you like Willow and understand Willow, the more you will actually hate the show. The show takes a That's dump how all works. over the movie. Yeah, yeah it takes a big cool. dump all over the movie. It's It's actually kind of... Like, I like Willow, the movie. It's fun. It's got some fun little lines there, fun some fun stuff here and there. It's got some characters you like. You know, of course, it's got some annoying stuff. Yeah, sure. But I like Willow. You know, it's very endearing and charming. But yeah, it's it. So even, you know, with my casual kind of liking of Willow, the, the show just like, uh, how how dare you I do this to the show? I just beat God of War, Ragnarok, Valhalla. This was so fun. I loved it. It was pretty fun. Bobby's like the Handmaid's Tale in how much you get out of it in the movie depends greatly on how much you agree or disagree with its premises. 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 Uh, I guess so. Well, it's also down to what you think its premise is. It's, uh, it's very much a Rorschach test, that film, with a lot of people. Eating butt is good for you. Vitamin C and protein, too. Farewell and adieu to you fair Flemish massives. Farewell and adieu to you massives of Fleem. Ah, goodbye. Hey, all right. Thanks for being here. Era of when YouTubers would mention Dark Souls in videos. That's how I found you. Cheers, Mola. Love your videos, even your Dark Souls 2 critiques. What do you mean Dark even? Souls. What do you mean even? <laughs> even your Dark yes, Souls videos are okay, I guess. Thank you. Appreciate it. And yeah, uh, there was a fun era where everyone would compare everything to Dark Souls. Especially when a lot of people would like find that interesting who hadn't even played Dark Souls. It was uh, strange. My ratings for the OT are 8, 9, and 6 for the respective films. Mm. Um, I think that's been posted before, but yeah, you know, I could understand giving them those numbers. What would, what I'd what have would to rewatch rating? them before settling on numbers for those. Yeah, I feel like that's, I think that's probably about like the the idea of like good a little bit better and then clearly the weakest is uh i think that's probably what we would end up going towards it's just which numbers we'd settle on it could be 785 786 it could be 775 you know it's who knows who knows but i think that's a decent convention I used to like onions, then I got COVID. Whoa. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I've heard COVID um, messes with your taste buds a bit. Oh, yeah, I've heard that, yeah. I never, I've never got COVID, so... Or maybe... I don't think I have. I don't but, think um, I did. Um, yeah, because some people... I either, actually. Because COVID has been... Uh, I heard that some people who got it said it was super mild, and it was like they barely noticed it, and they thought it was just the flu. And some people got it, and they said it was miserable absolutely miserable so mm -hmm. seems to be sort of luck of the draw in terms of how bad it is for you but i don't think i ever got covid um i think my sister and my i think i think a sister and a yeah a couple of my family members got it but i think literally a, just a couple so we came out a-okay I have a real-life campaign of Baldur's Gate with friends, and that was put on halt for scheduling reasons. Baldur's Gate 3 really does fill that hole. I'm good, glad to hear yeah, it. Yeah, good. Very glad to hear that it does. I love democracy. I love the EFAP. I'm gay. Right. Good to know, Palpy. Uh, Metal, you owe us Mauler's pants. Now pay up. Yeah, apparently his chat ordered him to take my pants when he was visiting, but... Did he? Oh, I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> so I guess oh, he failed. Oh, he could have. Uh, Bethesda. How, copied... how familiar are you with all your all your? I mean, say copies of pants. How many pairs of pants do you have? I suppose you he could familiar? maybe have stolen one like at the back of you know my wardrobe or whatever, and I may not have noticed. He might have. That would be hilarious if he starts a stream. He's like, "Well, I'm back home," and he holds up a pair of pants <laughs> or something like that. I stole, I stole some of Baller's pants. <laughs> that would be. And then he like tapes it or like like ticks it up to the wall behind him and yeah. it's just there forever next time he's gonna steal to a shit and then a shoe <laughs> like, a full wardrobe yeah <laughs> he's slowly but surely stolen from you i'm recreating mauler here 
<laughs> Bethesda copied the Outer Worlds space mechanics. All right, maybe. Um, I I don't think Outer Worlds had flying in space. I I, I think Outer Worlds just had the you use the ship to basically fast travel to different planets and locations. But essentially, yeah, that, that's basically what Bethesda did with um uh with Starfield to the point where you can pretty much go through the entire game and not engage in space combat at all. I think there's a couple missions where it's mandatory, but you that can go through pretty crazy. much the whole Yeah, you can go through pretty much the whole game and not um not engage with space combat. And a complaint that I've heard from both uh Patrician TV and private sessions is that the difficulty setting for Starfield, uh, the on-foot combat, which they say is very easy, is also tied into the ship combat as well, which can be extremely difficult if you don't have the right kind of ship. Uh, and, uh, and so you can be, ha you, even on the highest difficulties, you could be having a breeze fighting on foot, but then you get into a space battle and you just get absolutely destroyed with essentially no hope. Because if you don't have all your stuff planned out and prepared, and you haven't gotten a new ship because the ship you start out with, the Frontier, is like, it's a noob trap, they've said. It's terrible. So you need to replace it as soon as you can. Um, and plus in space, you know, there's stuff like there's no cover, and there's no way to really heal yourself or do anything like that. So you're essentially fucked. So if you want to bump up the difficulty... Because things are easy on the ground, well, you better hope you don't get into a space fight because you might get absolutely thrashed because you turned up the difficulty because it's a universal difficulty. Uh, has anyone seen Wonka yet? If so, thoughts? No. Um, I, I have not. I haven't really heard anyone talking about it, positively or negatively. I have seen so... positive things about it. Okay, that's interesting. Cause it's the director of uh, Paddington, right? Who's reliable? Another movie I have not seen. Because well, Paddington's considered really films, good, right? I haven't seen those films, but I hear that they're really good. Well, I know I would certainly be interested to watch the three Wonka movies that we have now and compare them to one another. That sounds like an arc to me. It like sure does. Uh, boop, boop, boop. what's your ideal Pokemon team with only one legendary? And this person suggests theirs would be Mewtwo, Charizard, Salamence, Blastoise, Metagross, and Electivire. Also high rags. Hello. I don't know. Meowth. Um, Are we talking, I presume we're talking just like which ones would be like a great combo to win, not who could you have a conversation with? Oh, uh, to win, to become the Pokemon master? Yeah. Uh, That's my guess to the next I don't, question. Venusaur, Gyarados, um, uh, Onyx, um, Zapdos. Um, well, that's your legendary gone. You're only yeah, one. I get. I I just see. Yeah, I said that one for the legendary. Um. Uh, oh, it's been so long. Is do I, I need like a? I got a, Zapdos is a fly boy, so we got one of those. We got Flying our Venusaur, our starter. We got a rock type. We have a water with Gyarados. You need a HP. You need a uh, the Tank. one that's gonna. No, just the the one that you you're gonna use to like what what is it called the the ones that you apply for like, uh, fly and. Uh, well, he's got Zapdos can fly, fly, right? Oh, oh no, but your your, your TM oh, abilities. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like your Zigzagoon. Um, <laughs> oh, like a TM dump, like where you put them all into yeah, one. Yeah, pretty much. So you put all of them on so that you can have those abilities. I, I mean, you don't have being, to. I, like, you could just fucking wing it. You could it. just have a spare. Or if you'd even need that, if you, you, you just fly over it, right? Yeah. If you have fly, a flying Pokemon. Or you could just walk around the bush. But uh, there's, there's always that option, I suppose. I don't yeah. really know. I haven't played Pokemon in a long time. Yeah, and like, I really I, only I sort of remember the Gen 1s. I'm sure you don't have to overthink it. I barely remember 
the Gen 2s, because I played and beat Gold, but it's just been so long since I've played it. I just don't really yeah. remember a lot of the Pokemon. I would want I just wanna, Lost Boys. That's it. <laughs> the I know. Yeah, I just want to... I just want to be a, a stream. I want to stream with my Meowth, and I want, we're just going to have fun. We're going to watch <laughs> movies together, and and we're just going to be a, a duo, you know? I'll do um, Blastoise, Typhlosion, Snorlax, Zapdos, Haunter, and possibly maybe even like Pikachu at the end or something. Just, uh, I'm just um. going to hang out with them. <laughs> yeah, a, having like a Haunter or a Gengar would be really probably yeah, good to have because ghost about. types, I, yeah. I'd probably want a Gengar. I'd want Blastoise or Charizard. Well, you can, one you, of you can pick Charizard because we pick the other two, so that'll round out our... Uh, yeah, Charizard's cool. Um, they're all good. They're, that's the thing. They're, they're, super, they're all super cool. Yeah. Um, I'd probably want maybe uh, Alakazam in the mix. Ooh, there. yeah, Alakazam. Uh, I like him. Yeah. He's a good psychic type. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, we have Charizard, um, Gengar, Alakazam. Um, if we were going for a legendary, uh, you both took Zapdos. He's probably the one that I'd want. I needed, um, yeah, I needed an electric type. You know, shocky uh, one. Well, yeah. uh, um. Kyogre will take him, uh, since I don't have a water type in my in my roster there. So I get him. Uh I'd get a Zigzagoon, I reckon, just for all of my TMs. Uh I would I think I'd also probably take like a Nitto King or Nitto Queen. You they're kind HM, of underrated, right? but I think they're Yeah, Machamp, yeah. I I'm, I'm I probably would want Snorlax. I like him. I like his chill attitude. Mm -hmm. The Diogenes of Pokemon. <laughs> He is, he, he's, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe you could call him the Diogenes of Pokemon. Uh, thank you so much, Fringy. I agree with you 100% on your Spider-Man 2 takes. I was disappointed with the lack of replayability you demand. Uh, oh, on, uh, the game. I would, for a second there, I'm like, replayability on Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2? Um, but yes, I think Spider-Man 2 is just, it's just lacking uh it's just generally lacking uh, yeah no one cool. talks about it it just kind of came and went mm -hmm. so many people whined about it that was the most noteworthy thing about the game what is that a weird it, fight they... with boulders gate 3 yeah yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. yeah. unwinnable fight with boulders gate 3 <laughs> yeah and then the nature of discussing like cutscenes and their relationship to games uh, well, I mean, uh, even Sony themselves are kind of admitting that uh, they can't keep doing this forever. Um, they need, they want to make more live service games. Oh, good. Because they can't be spending, you know, like three hundred million dollars on these games that don't have the don't have these absolutely amazing returns. Or they could just focus all their. They could spend a, a third of that and just make a game that has really good gameplay, and it doesn't have to have these. Does it have to be half a nonsense. movie? Well, I mean, Helldivers Two is uh, published by Sony, and that's one of those games where it's probably making them think, like, hmm, mm. you know. What if we just made a no solid way... core game with good options? Well, yeah, that's yeah. no way that game is uh, that expensive to have to have developed. No way. Um, yeah, it probably no wasn't way. cheap, but it certainly would. Oh have my been god, Vitamin Helldivers Two is the number two game on Steam right now. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that that's got to be making them think. Pal World is already down to two hundred six thousand, mm. um, which is like still a lot, obviously. But I feel like it was this information is incredibly out of date. Yes, potentially. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. As of as of now, as of me saying it, the top ten games on Steam are Counter Strike Two, Hell Divers Two, Dota Two, Pal World, Last Epoch. Apex Legends, uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Baldur's Gate 3, Call of Duty, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Oh, Siege is still going, huh? Cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think they're up to like their ninth year, actually. That'd be it. Uh, try playing Spark the Electric Jester. It's good. Fair enough. 
I'm going to be my last super chat for a bit. This gay actor, wife and I are saving up for a house. Love y'all. No problem. Oh, yeah, good luck, good luck yeah, man. Get that house. And yeah, get that house. Mow that lawn. And I love the just gay actors exactly. with wives. That's that's cool shit. You know, that's experimental. That's really It is very experimental. Living yeah. the truth sort of thing. Um, I'm old school. I could sit down after work with a smokable substance and Metal Gear Solid, and the world was fine. First person rocket cams, or I could be a cardboard box. What's not to love? Ah, the simpler times, man. Uh, hi, Ephap. Yeah. Seen Moon Channel on YouTube? It's run by a lawyer and has a good video on the health of the video game industry re uh, regarding the record layoffs in 2023. Not seen it, but it sounds interesting. I have not seen that, no. I, I sort of keep up on the news uh, regarding a lot of stuff, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of reasons to be um, excited. There's a lot of reasons to be uh, wary, but, you know, isn't that every year? So... Uh, gamers aren't going away. I think that's the big that's the big takeaway is that gamers are not going away. There's going to be more there's more gamers now than ever. The industry isn't going to die. It's it's there's too many people who want the stuff. And I mean So yeah, so don't get doomered or blackpilled or anything like that. Just always great games out there. Buy the good ones and ignore the bad ones. There you go. Thoughts on Reacher season 2, High Rags. Not Hello. Seen it. I have not seen it. I, uh, I've heard good things about the first season. Watched Drinker's reviews. Reach a 1. Season 1 was very well liked. Season 2 was also liked, but considered worse than Season 1. Ah. So hopefully it's on a backup trend with the next season, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Long Seems man. Like kind of thing a lot of people want. Good. True, thank you. Right. And you could not live with your own media literacy. What did that bring you? Back to Stuckman. We went back to <laughs> Stuckman again. That's right. You just kept having interesting things to say. Who'd have thought? Uh, hey, EFAP, open class actions. Please Google it. What? You want us to open like, class actions? <laughs> On like what? Lawsuits? Who do you want um, us to go for? Yeah, name, name them. We'll go for them. Yeah, we'll totally do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we'll fucking do it. Class action lawsuit. And uh, we got Rag sing some of the Arthur theme as Skeletor. The Arthur theme. Oh, that was actually one of the shows I never watched as a kid. I don't know the Arthur theme. I don't remember theme. much of the Arthur theme myself. What a wonderful time and day. Is that it? or what? That's the one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one line from Get it. Get along with each other. That's, that's hey. all I remember. Oh, yeah, and the haze. Yeah. I don't know the. I like. I, I, I think can't I can... help you my drags on this one. I'm not. Every day when I you're walking down the show. street, and everybody that you meet has an original point of view. Man, I wish YouTube was like that. It's <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny. The, the lyrics for this little cartoon TV show, like. I don't know how oh, it wow. goes. I, I would have to listen to it. Let's see. Let me go. Arthur theme song. Well, PBS Kids. While you do that, I'll just read out, because we got only a couple more. Pokemon right. of the day is Drampa, the Pokedex entry for Ultra Sun, which is, if a child it has made friends with is bullied, Drampa will find the bully's house and burn it to the ground. Jesus what? Christ, why do they do oh this? God. Why do they what? do this? What the the Pokemon world is like... I'm, I'm. It used to be fun and everything, and now it seems to be like a nightmare realm I think where some that Pokemon purpose, is just surely. gonna snap and burn down a whole town, what the hell? or suck out your soul, or kidnap your children, oh just because well, that's what it does. I mean, Jeez. this this one's slightly better than some of the other ones. Like uh, the Ultra Moon one says, it appears in towns and plays with children. Drample will protect kids when they're in danger, so their parents don't have to worry. See, like why that one? That's the good one. A protector of well, children. Well, right, that's Ultra an... Moon. Ultra Sud is the one where it burns houses to the ground. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> God, yeah, have it. What does it look like? Oh, uh, kind of the kind of thing where if you saw it as a kid, you'd be like, "Hmm, I'm not sure." Because you'd imagine that. Oh my God! <laughs> he looks like a wise. He does dragon. look like a wise old dragon. I didn't know that he was an arsonist. I, I think didn't that either. Looking at him, he you looks just like a water him with like type. a fucking canister and a lighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he looks like a kind of a like a snake with 
Are those legs or wings that he's on? It's something. He's an interesting design. Not bad. Not not bad, but interesting. The Empire is never more alive than when we sleep, which is the last super chat, leaving us with uh, whatever Rags wants to do with the Arthur theme. Well, here, let me listen to it. It's just like a minute, so. Okay. God, look at this little asshole. I think this is kind of coming back to me. Like I've heard, I've heard the, the, is it the refrain that repeats? Or is it the chorus? Why not I forget. Both? Well, I, I, um, let's see. When, uh, everything. And I think. This would be this would help if it was a song I knew. So you'd have you say, okay, so it would be a Skeletor would show. Oh my gosh, it's time for Arthur, but evil. What what's Arthur but evil like? And then you turn it on, and then your kids you're like, hey, this is great. Oh wait, how come this video is twenty three k up and five k down? Do people not like the Arthur theme song? It seems to be quite controversial. Hmm. Comments are turned off because I guess it's a PBS Kids thing, but that, that's kind of odd. I wonder, I wonder why that would be the Maybe case. Maybe Arthur like got canceled. You said something on Twitter. That. Maybe Arthur did say something. Oh, it was probably Buster. See, I mm. know Buster the Rabbit, but I don't know the theme song. Uh, and I say, hey, no, and I say, and I, it's it's weird. And I say, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. If you can learn to work and play and get along with each other, you've got to listen to your heart, listen to the beat, listen to the rhythm, the rhythm of the street. Open up your eyes, open up your ears, get together and make things better by working together. That was beautiful. Hey, good job. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. It's a very wholesome message from Skeletor. Yeah. I think Skeletor's I think Skele looking out for everybody, really. Um, like that. You sort of pay attention to some of the stuff he says, and you're like, wait a minute, is he the hero? And you're like, maybe. Maybe. Maybe the Skull and Bones man is, is, is actually looking, kind of more representative of how life truly is. I'm looking at the, the lyrics here. Every day when you're walking down the street and everybody that you meet has an original point of view. Okay. And I'm looking for what does view rhyme with? Or is it just this weird boy hanging off the end? Hey, day, play, each other. Yeah, that one does. Yeah, because even though these are, this four lines, and I say, hey, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. If you can learn to work and play and get along with each other. So that, that's kind of like the first bit, which is odd to have three lines. So you have rhyme, rhyme, and then the odd one out. But then you have the, I guess, the re repeating chorus refrain, whatever it's called. And you have Hey Day Play and then Other, that weird one hanging off the end. Again. You gotta listen to your heart, listen to the beat, listen to the rhythm, rhythm of the street. So we're good. Heartbeat, rhythm, street. Heartbeat, rhythm, street. Okay. Eyes, ears, better together. Better together. Yeah, that works. It's a simple message and it comes from the heart. Believe in this and in yourself. That's the place to start. Okay, heart, yourself, start. There's no pattern here, because the first time it's street, meet, view, so like A, A, B, and then it's A, B, A, in terms of its rhymes. Hey, day, play, other, hey. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't like this. It feels very <laughs> unstructured, and I don't know. I don't like this. Yeah. I agree. I'm I'm gonna down. I'm gonna dislike this. I don't like this theme song. This is no JJ the Jet Plane. Let me tell you that. Well, I will present the opposing opinion. That is, we need more Arthur in our life because the the theme song is literally just, hey, other people have different opinions. Okay, and that's fine. The internet could use a bit more <laughs> <Right>. of that. <laughs> listen. Yeah. Okay. Listen. That's a fine. That that's an understandable point of view. I think this is a shit theme song. <laughs> Dude, Arthur's gonna beat you up. Have you seen his fist? Arthur is how how old is Arthur? Like ten. How how old is Arthur? In Morgan, no. In how old is Arthur? in the show? In the Joker, <laughs> no. In the show, 
Arthur is Arthur Chronicles the Adventures of Eight Year Old Arthur. God, oh. God, no wonder he's an asshole. Um, so that means if we start with, so in nineteen ninety six, Arthur was eight years old. Okay, so Arthur was born in eighty eighty eight. Okay, so he's like thirty six now, depending on when his birthday is, right? So Arthur's, I mean, Arthur's older than us, mm -hmm. but he's a glasses wearing nerd. So and he, he hasn't probably even fixed his theme song. Yeah, and he's got a shitty theme song, whereas Efap's theme song is fucking good. Ours is like ours is like the ours is. Uh, we have many great ones. It's tough to even pick them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's a, yeah. Arthur's thirty six now. Isn't it? That seems like the thing that somebody would be like, yeah, let's make a show about Arthur and he's 36, but now he's a loser and he's an alcoholic drunk and he's got his marriage he's is falling apart. He's divorced, obviously, yeah. Yeah, he's divorced, yeah. yeah. Um, Arthur chronicles the adventures of eight year old Arthur through engaging emotional stories that explore issues faced by real kids, telling these stories from a kid's point of view without moralizing or talking down. All this right. is an interesting question on Screen Rant. How old is Arthur age? Interesting. Interesting. And that was the final question. So thank you all so much for sending them in. We appreciate it. And uh, I suppose we'll see you in the next EFAP thing, whatever it may be. But for now, little bit. Goodbye, everyone. See, see you later. Everybody. And remember, Phineas and Ferb had a kick-ass opening song.